What is up my gamers, welcome back to yet another battle commentary. This is, again, from the stream that I do over on DLive, I'm just going to plug this every single time. So if you want to skip this, then uh, go right on ahead. But yes, this is from one of my streams I did on DLive over the weekend. I basically set up a stream and uh, host a multiplayer lobby, announce the password, and then people hop in and we battle. This was a 3v3 of all dwarves versus all tomb kings, which I did want a little themed one. But yes, if you want to take part in these sorts of battles, then be sure to head on over to DLive. There is a link in the description, be sure to drop me a follow, and then you'll know when I go live, or head on over to the Discord, because I also let them know whenever I go live, and then you can hop in and absolutely mop the floor with me. But yes, let's get into this battle. So we have three dwarf armies here. They're fairly similar in composition, to be honest with you. Uh, I brought a lot more anti-large than uh, any of my <laughs> any of my allies, because I was gambling on the fact that the Tomb Kings would bring a lot of large taggers, and you know what? For the most part, I was right, with the exception of this one army over here. They, uh, they were pretty much all uh, large, un uh, large units, yes. So I chose Ungrim Iron Fist to uh, lead my army, of course, and I also brought Gotchka and Felix, just for a bit of fun, along with a bunch of Iron Drakes, uh, three Slayers and three Longbeards, some Great Cannons, and a couple of Gyrocopter with Brimstone guns. Just for, you know, the maximum amount of anti large I could. My ally on the right here has a mixed unit of a bunch of Iron Breakers. This is going to use those explosive satchel charges oh so wonderfully. Uh, five units of Thunderers, a Runesmith, being led by Grom Brindle, the White Dwarf, and a bunch of organ guns, along with some iron drakes and some slayers hidden in the woods here. My ally on the left here brought a pretty pretty standard force of a couple of hammerers, a bunch of thunderers, some iron drakes, uh, both with and without troll hammer torpedoes, a uh, flame cannon, a uh, regular cannon, uh, some organ guns, and another cannon, and a bunch of miners with blasting charges that they very boldly decided to place up at the front here, and uh, we'll see how that goes just in a little bit. He uh, chose Belgar Iron Hammer to lead himself, and he brought a Thane and a Runesmith as well to assist. So uh, let's get into this battle. Now, my initial thoughts with this were, you know, with the Dwarves, we have the ranged advantage here, so I start to move my cannons up, and I'm like, you know what, we need to shoot, because I can see that these guys are getting absolutely slaughtered. That first shot there, they're already uh, nine entities down, so that's very not good. And uh, with, with the Casket of Souls, yeah, they're getting absolutely ripped to shreds here. They're not really going to get much value, which is very unfortunate, because it was a very bold strategy. And if it had worked out, they would have got a bunch of kills, done a whole massive amount of damage. Uh, but unfortunately, all of this was shabby great bows and the Casket of Souls and everything is just ripping them to pieces and they're going to root before they get any value whatsoever. So it's very unfortunate, but very bold strategy. I admire it. I admire the, uh, I admire, I admire the, uh, the, the effort there that they went to try and do that. So as you can see, I'm just very slowly moving my cannons up. Uh, just to try and get into range because I know I have 440 range, but what I didn't bank on is that the Casket of Souls also has 440 range and it does a massive amount of damage to all my infantry, which is just sat here waiting to be shot at. So I'm just going to speed this up because the start of this battle is basically me waiting around getting my cannons there now in range. So I believe I target them onto these bone giants over here or just pretty much anything that is in range that they can shoot at that's large. There we go, the Ushapti, I apologize. So I'm just trying to take out a bunch of these and do some damage uh, just to stop them from firing, maybe give my ally over here a chance to get up there. Uh, I start to move my gyro bombers up, uh, my gyro sorry, but they start getting ripped to pieces, so I, uh, I abandoned that fairly quickly. It was uh, very unfortunate that the <laughs> that the enemy brought so much range, it made it very, very difficult to attack. It was it's a very uh, beached of Normandy. It was a very D-Day invasion that we were trying to pull here. Uh, as you can see, my ally is getting absolutely slaughtered. Basically, all the mines with blasting charges are now either retreating manually or retreating because they have no leadership. Uh, one of my gyrocopters does start to retreat, but he's at, you know, about a quarter health. Uh, he's within range of getting... <laughs> He's very far off from the edge of the map, so he'll be coming back. No bother whatsoever. We can now see the Casket of Souls is now in range of my Great Cannons. is now firing on them. And uh, that's not very nice indeed, because he does a lot. They do so much damage. It's all magical as well, so it goes through. Look at that. 1,040 armor-piercing damage. Now, Great Cannons, the small targets, and they do a lot of damage. But, you know, a couple of volleys of that, they're really going to start to feel it. And also, because these missiles splash, they do some damage to my Iron Drakes. So I just start to think, you know what? I'm going to need to do something. I'm going to need to make an advance. As painful as it is, it's what needs to be done. Uh, I start to target these Casket of Souls over here with my Great Cannons, and even though when they do hit, it's a massive amount of damage, they're just not hitting often enough to take them out, and it's very clear to me that my Great Cannons are going to get taken out way before those Casket of Souls, so I start to make my units move up. I form them up on the flanks here, I have two units of Slayers and a unit of Longbeards going to the right, along with three Iron Drakes, uh, some Gyrocopters, and I believe Ungrim Iron Fist. I'm um, sending them up this way. On the left here, it's kind of the opposite, two units of uh, troll hammer torpedoes, two units of longbeards, one unit of slayers, and Gotrick and Felix are going to be moving up on the left side. So I just wait for everyone to get into position, and then I start my invasion. My ally on the left here is moving up 
very, very aggressively, which I very much appreciate. Uh, it's very useful that he's moved up these guys. It's kind of a sacrificial lamb because these, all these units are focusing. These miners are blasting charge. So even though they're getting slaughtered, the majority of his unit is moving up pretty unhindered. Uh, but he needs to move them in quite quickly to make sure he gets value out of the Thunderers before they get shot to pieces. Now, he is using, using all of his artillery to focus these single entities that the enemy has brought to the Cameron War Sphinx. Uh, the other Cameron War Sphinx is getting obliterated by all those cannon shots, but my ally over here getting obliterated by those casket souls. One of my uses of cannons is rooting, which is very unpleasant. I'm not a big fan of that, uh, but they should hopefully come back uh, not in uh, after not too much time because, you know, they are, they are dwarves. They, they like to come back. They don't root that easily. And my slayers moving up here very, very quickly. My uh, longbeard's taking a little bit longer. The slayers are taking the brunt of this force, and it's just a whole bunch of damage. I'm thinking this is this ain't good. You know, we're taking so much damage, taking so many casualties. I'm not sure we're going to be able to sustain moving up, and they can just, you know, use their ammo, and we can never attack them. Uh, but slayers are unbreakable, so no matter how much damage they're taking, they're getting in there, so I see that I'm in range of these of Shepard, so I'm like, okay, we need to make this charge. These guys are also moving up, so I decide to charge them into this bone giant here to just try and bog them down, stop them from firing, allow me and my allies' units to move up. I'm kind of trying to play the sacrificial lamb here and, you know, just pin them down, even if they're not going to get any kills, just to make sure that, uh, that we can make our move. Uh, my longbeards up here are now starting to move into position, and they're going to be attacking some of the enemy infantry. Unfortunately, my slayers get pinned down by the tomb guard. That's a terrible matchup, because, you know, slayers, they're, they're not advertising infantry at all. They want to be going against large targets, and uh, that's exactly what I'm trying to do with them, but unfortunately, they get pinned down. My units of slayers on the left here are now moving into these Ushabti Great Bows. Meanwhile, my ally is getting ripped to pieces, but he is moving his units into position and is going to be getting some shots off very, very nicely. The hammerers are now on the Hero Titan along with the Thane, which is trying to go after this bone giant here, but he's going to be sucked into this. And they're doing some excellent damage. Gotchuk and Felix are now charging up, trying to take out these Ushabti Great Bows. Felix is lagging a little bit behind. He's not going to be doing much use this battle other than providing some replenishment for Gotchuk and uh, Ungrim if he manages to get into range. Speaking of Ungrim, he is somewhere. Where is he? Oh, there he is. He's just kind of stood around the middle. I believe I send him to attack some of these Ushabti or maybe uh, Kalida, but uh, we'll have to wait and see because uh, he's kind of stood around at the moment, uh, along with a lot of my units here. Now, the Blasting Charge is going off onto these Tomb Guard, and it, that's going to be a massive spell cast from my enemy. I can't remember which spell that is. Oh, it's, it's the Light Tornado one. Oh, you'd think I'd know by now. I've done a million videos on spells. But nevertheless, that's going to do a lot of damage to my longbeards, as well as a little bit of damage to my Trollhammer torpedoes. But the Trollhammer torpedoes are now focusing on the Bone Giants, trying to shut them down as quickly as possible to stop them from firing and allow us to move up and take them out. Because the enemy here, they have no melee troops. You know, they have a couple of units of Tomb Guard, which are quickly being obliterated. But if we can get in there, we can take them out very, very handily. So my other Trollhammer torpedoes are now focusing down Kalida, because she is a large target, so they're going to do a bunch of damage there if they can hit, because she's a single target, it is quite difficult. Uh, my units of Slayers now moving up to try and shut down the Casket of Souls, even though they are basically out of ammo, I just want them out of commission as quickly as possible. The long bits here have managed to pin down this Lich Priest of Nehekara, so they're doing their best to take him out as quickly as possible. Now, Gotrick and Felix here are taking on some Ushabti Great Bows. In fact, the Chosen of the Gods Ushabti Great Bows, along with some Slayers. That's an easy matchup there. A bunch of anti-large damage. They're not going to be able to. Uh, they're not going to be able to stand up to that. Now, my ally here is moving excellent. Is making excellent ground, sorry. His mood is staying up to assist in me killing those, doesn't really need to. The enemy hero titan is getting obliterated by all of these units that are in there doing a massive amount of damage to him. In fact, he's just decided, you know what, he's crumbling, I'm going to ignore him, I'm going to start taking out this bone giant. Now, the flame cans are now in range, and that fire damage is going to be catastrophic against these undead enemy units. That's going to be a bunch of bonus damage, I'm not going to be able to withstand that. The casket of souls is still firing off and causing a bunch of havoc with my ally over here. A load of damage onto their artillery, but fortunately, uh, they can kind of withstand because they're dwarves. What they can't really withstand is these Necropolis Knights with Halberds that have managed to flank their way around. But fortunately, the Hammers have managed to shut them down, so they should be able to hold that line fairly easily. Now, my ally that was in the tree over here, he's now being uh, pinned down by some Tomb Guard and some Hero Titans. And I kind of moved my Brimstone Copters around and kind of forgot about them, but I really should be targeting on this Hero Titan because it's sticking around. It will not leave us alone, so we're desperately trying to take it out as quickly as possible. Now, Grumbrin, all the White Dwarfs, in a duel against High Queen Kalida, which apparently she's uh, winning decisively. Uh, never mind, she's now losing. That's how quickly it can change, because Grumbrindle, he he's a monster, dude. When he gets into combat, there is barely anything that can stand up against him. Uh, Ungrim Iron Fist, he's not quite the same, but he's he's the Slayer King. He's going against all these large targets. It's Christmas for him. You know, she did cast a spell that reduces melee attack and defense, but once that wears off, 
he's going to be doing a unreal amount of damage, especially alongside these Slayers that are in here with him. There's not many of them left, but they are doing a bunch of damage. A whole massive host of damage also coming from my Iron Drake. Uh, what Troll Hammer Torpedoes against all these large targets here. It is just a slaughter. Uh, one of the High Queen Cleaders is dead, which is on the right flank here, taken out by Grumbrindle, the White Dwarf. The other High Queen Cleader is taking a bunch of damage from Ungrim Iron Fist and these Slayers. And the Lord on this side, which I believe is Setra the Imperishable, he's being chased down by a bunch of uh, my allied units. At this point, it's pretty much just clean up. We're like, okay, the majority of the lords are gone. You know, we are starting to roll over the stamina. We just need to, you know, keep pressing the attack and take them out as quickly as possible. I'm just saying, guys, just, just keep pushing forward. You need, you need to move your army. We need to be firing. You need to be doing something. Uh, we don't want to throw it away just yet. But we can see here that the majority of my enemy units are now weak in binding because they're lord dying. Oh, my God, that was a large explosion. And there we see that the other cleader is breaking. And I believe Setra has also died. So all the enemy lords off the map. So it is now a matter of cleanup. Uh, Tomb King and Tomb King units without a lord. It's, it's a slaughter. You know, my Brimstone Copters here, they're taking a bunch of damage. But these guys, their lord is dead. They don't really have much uh, in the ways of defending themselves against this. I'm just charging them in, trying to make a bombing run. But they are running away. They are quickly breaking. The Hero Titan over here, it's lasting a phenomenal amount of time. It's got critical binding. Uh, it's about to start crumbling, but it still takes a, such a long time because it's got such a massive health pool to actually die. In fact, as you can see there, all the units on the field are broken and completely disappeared, apart from this goddamn hero titan. It takes so long to disintegrate because it has just that big a health pool. But yes, we take the victory at the dwarves. It was a, uh, it was a very back and forth battle that start there when we're taking that much damage moving up. I was thinking, you know what? We, we can't do this. The goddamn ice cream truck. As I was saying, yes, as we moved up there, I was thinking, you know what, we're dwarves, we're very slow, we, we're not going to be able to get up here before they completely rip us to pieces. And with that Casket of the Souls being able to shoot our artillery, I really didn't think we had a chance because, you know, if the melee units can't make it up and the artillery units can't support them, then what can we really do? But we just needed that dwarven resilience and the unbreakable nature of the Slayers to push forward, pin down some of the enemy units, and we could quickly slaughter them. All the anti-large I brought really paid off. In fact, I was going to go all Slayers, and some people in chat were like, that's, that's a strange arm right there, so I decided to change it, you know, appease appease the stream a little bit but you know what i should have saved the slayers we would have won that so much easier but yes it was a great battle i really enjoyed it uh, i'm really glad that we managed to pull it back it was a it was another great win i tell you what the uh, the win loss on the stream was uh, very well but let's get to the stats so as you can see here we actually didn't get that many kills on any units because you know the enemies didn't really bring that many units you know they were chapter great bows i think they only come in units of what is it like six or twelve it's something like that and all of these are single entities so we really can't get that many kills Apart from on Dixby Floppin, who had some skeletons on the left and the uh, Necropolis Knight Halberds, and on Nando that was on the right and had a bunch of Tomb Guard. So that's why we really got the majority of our kills. Uh, but for the most part, you know, the most kills I got in my entire army was 11, and that is joint on some Slayers, a Gyrocopter with Brimstone Gun. But they all did a massive amount of damage. These Slayers, very noble indeed, charged forward uh, whilst being shot at and picked up the kills that we needed to win the game. Uh, Melkan VHN who was, I believe, on the right, got a massive number of kills in those slayers because he managed to intercept those skeletons in the woods. And with those Iron Drakes and the Iron Breakers, they just picked up a massive number of kills, finished off a lot of units. Really, really excellent work there. And these Ogre Guns, again, lots of excellent work done there. Cough Creamer on my left, who was against Dixby Floppin. Uh, he, again, was against a bunch of single entities. Uh, some of the miners actually managed to get 34 kills off, which is very impressive, but the majority of them, yes, zero there, zero there, zero there, zero there. They rooted incredibly quickly, which is very upsetting. And again, quite similar to me. Didn't get many kills, but did a lot of damage. The flame cannon there getting so much value, especially against a enemy uh, army that it looks like this. Uh, but the enemy armies, they, they got a lot of value. They got a bunch of kills. Even though dwarf units are very small in number, they are, they're still larger than uh, single entities and large units. So these are Shabti Great Bows getting 60, 48, 69, 72, 67, 54. A bunch of damage there. The Bone Giants again. The goddamn ice cream truck. It's just the Bone Giants there again getting a bunch of kills along with those Casket of Souls. So much value. Uh, for Dixby Flopping, again, the Bone Giant with nearly 40 kills. Karen Wall Sphinx, 40 kills. 44, 81. Massive amounts of value from the enemy artillery there. And it's the same story for Nando. Uh, a couple of kills on the Tomb Guard. I believe that's when my Slayers got pinned down in combat. But once the uh, Long Beards got in there and they started getting pelted by range fire, they broke incredibly quickly. And again, 50 kills, 41 from the ranged units. It's an absolute slaughter, but we managed to push through. And it was an excellent battle. I enjoyed it very much. Yes, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, again, I'll just quickly plug, if you want to take part in some of these battles, head on over to DLive. There's a link in the description. Follow the channel and you'll know when I go live. Or head on over to the Discord and join that. Again, link is in the description. Be sure to join. And then you can, you know, know when I'm going streaming, even without making a DLive account if you don't want to. And then you can hop in and absolutely slaughter me on these battles. And it should be an excellent time. But yes, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to leave it a like. And uh, if you want to see more content, you know, battle commentaries, 
uh, guides, Monday videos, which are just kind of whatever I'm feeling like, games that aren't Total War, Warhammer 2, sometimes, hopefully Warhammer 3, if it ever comes out, then be sure to hit subscribe and stick around, and it should be a fantastic time, I'd appreciate that very, very much. If you didn't like this video, then be sure to leave a dislike and a comment, tell me what you didn't like, what I could do to improve, I'd appreciate that very, very much, and uh, certainly won't cry myself to sleep every single night. But yes, I believe that is all from me. Uh, so for now, guys, I've been Colonel Thunders, and I'll see you next turn.